Okay, welcome back to Think Tech. This is Community Matters. More specifically, this is a preview of our Legal Chicken, Legal Egg program, uh, which will take place as a webinar on September 30 at 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you want to register, you know, to see that, um, go to thinktechhawaii.com's registration link. And one of the one of the six players in that program is Kimi Ide Foster. She joins us today. Hi, Kimi. Hi. So, um, what do you think? You know, this program is interesting. It features you. And it's moderated by Avi Stoifer. Uh, you're going to talk about uh, abortion in America. Um, Avi Stoifer will moderate, as I said, Chris Marvin on the mainland. We'll talk about gun violence prevention. Uh, Richard Walsh, Grow professor at UH Law School, talk about the challenges of climate change. That's what he teaches. Um, and we have Sylvia Albert, uh, Voting Rights in America. He was going to be with you, but she can't make it this morning. And uh, Jeff Portnoy, Beyond Insurrection, uh, five heavy hitters on five really critical and threatening issues. Um, so what I wanted to do is the first thing I wanted to do, Kimmy, if you'll permit me, is to play our promo on this is a couple minutes long so that people Absolutely. can get a handle on what we're saying about it. Okay. Good. All right, we'll do that now. In transitional times, every action has a reaction. This cycle gives us an echo chamber. New events lead to legal changes, of course, and legal changes lead to new events. Yes, it is chicken and egg. And these days, could it be that the interaction time is faster than before? Your host for this conversation is Avi Soifer, professor and former dean of the William S. Richardson School of Law at the University of Hawaii in Manoa. Panelist Kimi Ide Foster is a partner in the law firm of Chun Kerr in Honolulu, Hawaii. In this program, she will discuss abortion in America. Panelist Chris Marvin is a former military helicopter pilot and principal of Marvin Strategies, a strategic communications firm specializing in cultural advocacy through socially-minded narrative building. In this program, he will discuss gun violence prevention. Panelist Richard Walsgrove is an assistant professor of law and co-director of the Environmental Law Program at the William S. Richardson School of Law at the University of Hawaii in Manoa. In this program, he will discuss the challenges of climate change. Panelist Sylvia Albert is the Director of Voting and Elections at Common Cause in Washington, D.C. In this program, she will cover voting rights in America. Panelist Jeff Portnoy is a partner in Cage Shadi, a law firm in Honolulu, Hawaii. In this program, he will cover insurrection and beyond. Come join us for this important discussion. You can register to attend on thinktechhawaii.com. Please do, and we'll see you there. Aloha. Okay, you know, when we first conceived of this uh, discussion with Avi, we came up with the legal chicken, legal egg thing. And uh, yeah, nobody understands that. Uh, what, what, are we talk, what are we talking about chicken and egg? But hopefully you do, and we'll be able to make people who watch this mm -hmm. program understand that the law is, is not... Um, it's not static at all, especially at these times. And it moves quickly. And sometimes, you know, regrettably, it moves in uh, what you and I would consider the wrong direction. And then you have to correct it. And then you have to deal with the consequences of that and so forth. It's a, it's a spiral. Not clear whether it's a spiral up or down. Uh, that's one of the <laughs> baseline issues of this program. Um, so abortion in America is, you know, it's, it's really at the top of the list in the sense that, uh, you know, you have the decision of the Supreme Court um, repealing Roe v. Wade, and then you have all this other legal action going on. And that foments, aside from unrest, it foments other legal action. And then you have this, this tit for tat sort of thing. And the, and the federal you know, system is, is, is deteriorating. And, uh, oh, my God, you have a very difficult discussion to organize, Kimi. So can you tell us your thinking? <laughs> can you tell us your thinking going in about where it is, you know, and how the country has re reacted to it uh, and how the country will react to the reaction 
and so forth. Yeah, um, thanks, Jay. I, first of all, I do really appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this. Like you said, a really heavy hitting panel. Um, Any time that I can spend in Dean Cypher's illustrious presence and learning more is time well spent as far as I'm concerned. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, tell me a little bit about kind of just abortion and the fact that I think we were talking before the show, November elections coming up, abortions on the ballot. Um, whether you want it to be or not. I think we've seen some states that have tried to not talk about it. And they're like, you know, maybe if we just don't say anything, people will forget that we tried to strip their rights away. And that's just not an option. Um, especially with social media and with the national coverage covering everything. And I think I, I don't want to sound overly optimistic here because that hasn't really worked out the last, you know, six years or so. Um, but I do think that with the Dobbs decision, the GOP may have overplayed its hand just a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to have a theoretical discussion about abortion bans, and it's one thing to have kind of this like idealistic, you can say, well, I think abortion is wrong, and you don't actually have to go to the mat for it. You get to kind of have this like safe, cozy, like I'm a, I'm a good conservative Christian, and I think it's wrong. Um, and then Dobbs came down and knocked, took, took away Roe v. Wade. And all of a sudden you're faced with very real world consequences. And I'm completely blanking on who the Senator is now, but he, he came out in a minute. He's like, I'm sorry. When I voted for this, you know, when I voted against abortion access in my own state, when I did this year, I did not think about the, you know, the nine-year-old girl that's raped and has to carry a child, the young woman who wants to be a mother, and there's something horrifically wrong with her child. And if you don't have an abortion, you're both going to die. You know, and it's like, I think all of a sudden it became very, very real for people. And it has kind of pushed in the opposite direction. I mean, like, look, look at Kansas. Kansas is one of the most conservative states in the union. And when they put it up to a vote, the people of Kansas were like, no, this goes too far. You know, it's, it's one thing to be able to say it in, in, in kind of the abstract. But it's another to look at very much in the eye and be like, oh, these are real people. These are, this is our mothers and our daughters and our sisters and the girl down the street. And this isn't this like kind of abstract horror anymore. It's not the bogeyman. Um, so like you said, it's kind of action reaction, right? It's Dobbs, Dobbs fell or Do Roe v. Wade fell with Dobbs. Um, some states put a trigger bound to effect immediately. And then you started to see a whole mess of other things, medical professionals being confused about what to do. There's a mass exodus of some people from other states. Um, I don't think that they've fully appreciated yet how much strain this is going to put on their social services in the next five to 10 years. You're going to force these women to have kids, then your foster system better be up to par. Your medical system better be up to par. And we all know it's not because these aren't states that put money into this kind of thing. Um, so it's going to be just kind of this constant, like, where does the, the ball is going to keep rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And it's like, well, where is it going to stop? And what's going to happen at the end of all of this? So. I think it's a very, I think it's a very appropriate topic for your chicken and egg discussion. Yeah, well, it's not going to come to an end anytime soon. Sure you know, you, you have this, some states doing the trigger laws that's really horrendous, and, and they, they will regret that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They and all the people in them, because they're all the, may I offer this, all the people in them are human beings. Mm -hmm. and, and roughly half of those people are women human beings, and they're going to suffer trigger mm -hmm. law, under, especially under a trigger law. And then you have the states that are trying to beat the rap, you know, trying to get out from under it. And um, that, you know, that creates, um, you know, other problems. Um, it's like, you know, when, uh, when the Supreme Court did this, it had no perception of the consequences. None, none whatsoever. It, it's, it's, it's kind of shocking to think that these people who are charged with sitting on the highest court in the land, who you have to, I mean, the personal politics aside, you have to believe that there is a somewhat common degree of common sense amongst these people, and it just doesn't show here. I mean, it, it's it was shocking. It was shocking to me because, like you said, they obviously didn't think this through. And then, what really I'm sorry, I'm digressing a little bit, but what, like really, really burns me is the GOP did this whole like, well, let's return it to the state, the state's right issue, um, you know. If you if you if you don't like it, like like Clarence said, well, Justice Clarence says, then take it to the voting box. But then you have states like Indiana, where the people were also a conservative state, 
but the people were vocally against an abortion ban. And they said, you know what, actually, we're not going to put it on the ballot box. We're just going to pass it by legislative special session. It's like, so this has nothing to do with taking it to the people. You don't care about individual rights. Like you have an agenda and you're going to push this no matter what, come hell or high water, no matter who gets hurt, because you think you can, you know, it's disgusting. Well, to say that it's, it's really not a matter of federal law, let's put it on the states, is creating chaos. Because Absolutely. it means at the end of the day, you, you know, you need some kind of um, chart, a graph and a chart for every state. Mm -hmm. And the results will be different for every state. Mm -hmm. And the need for further legislation to uh, uh, accommodate it will be different mm -hmm. for every state. So, you know, the federal system has essentially been torn asunder when some states, the women have rights, and other states, they don't have rights. And in the middle, 100%. all their rights are different. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's shocking. And I mean, not even just for the women, which are obviously far and away the biggest losers in this entire fight. But I have friends who are doctors in Texas. I have friends who are doctors in Florida. And they kind of are like, you're, you're upending an entire system. I mean, especially some of the doctors, like in Texas, for example, like they've been instructed if they have to choose to choose the life of the child, they cannot perform it, you know? And my friend was looking at me and she was like, my very first oath is to do no harm. And if a woman's bleeding out of my operating table, arrest me. I'm not going to let it happen. You know? And it's like, you, you're, you're interfering with a whole bunch of disciplines and belief systems. And it's like, this is crazy. And like you said, it, it, it's insane that it varies state by state. So if for whatever reason you get stuck in a red state or one of the, one of these trigger law states, you're screwed. You can't do anything about it. You know, it's wild. And it's, it's not an issue that we can afford to have that kind of state by state chaos. This is too, it's too important. It's too dangerous. When you and I, we sit down and try to figure out all the implications and the need for what do you call it? Corrective action. Mm -hmm. it's, it's huge and it's everywhere it's and it goes beyond just the issue of abortion it's an attack on the federal system it's an attack 100%. on uniformity among the state it's an attack on human rights civil rights mm -hmm. personal rights privacy all that a, a really extraordinary violence that this Dobbs case did thank you Clarence Thomas we really <laughs> appreciate your <laughs> your concern for the lives of women but let me let me start uh, you know drilling down on some of the just some of the things you mentioned. I mean, for one thing, implication of the Supreme Court, they may have to be the Supreme Court has shown that it's not it doesn't care about consequences. That you know, that is flawed to the to a degree that we have to, you know, change the number of judges, change the tenure of judges. Um, and that's gotta be one implication of this. This calls for a ref, doesn't it? a reform of the Supreme Court. Before we talked about that in, in the abstract, now we're mm -hmm. talking about it as a real possibility, a real need. Um, that that's just one thing. If this is all in your wheelhouse, Kimmy, uh, <laughs> that, and then we're talking. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're talking about you know the, these various states that are showing how imperfect they are. Um, their legislatures, their judges, their politicians, uh, uh, all, all going off the side, all, all you know, out of control here and all not caring about the consequences. Um, so how do you fix that? There's a million issues in, in the states, and there's 50 of them. <laughs> They're all different. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's crazy. Um, you know, this is something that we actually were talking about it. I just came back from Planned Parenthood board retreat last weekend, something like that. Um, but we were talking about just kind of like pie in the sky. If money and time and the fact that the country's on fire were not a pressing issue, you know, how do we fix? How do we fix what we've become? Because it, it, like you said, Jay, it, it, it goes well beyond abortion. I mean, I, I don't want to say we're irreparably broken. The country is showing some serious, serious cracks. Um, but so much of it, at least I think, goes back to we need to do something about the public education system in this country. I know I've said this on the show before, but 
we are, I think we are largely in the mess we're in right now because the average person off the street could not pass a fifth, like a sixth grade civics test if you put a gun to their head. I mean, look at the number of people that thought Trump could just stay president by just staying in the White House. Like, did you miss social studies? Did you miss any of those classes? <laughs> and the sad answer is probably yes, because they went to a school that is either underfunded or doesn't prioritize it because there's no there's no like national effort to have a curriculum that covers these things. And then undereducated kids turn into over aggressive teenagers who turn into adults that have these like, well, I know everything and I don't need to learn anything else about this. And it's like, you don't actually, you have a terrible grasp of how the country's supposed to work and run and you're voting. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's just, that's, I mean, to me, fixing our public education system would go a long way. That's, that's high in the sky. And like I said, if the country weren't on fire with about 10,000 other issues. <laughs> well, there's also the thing, you know, that goes to, um, um, you know, like Halloween tricks like the electoral, the fraudulent electoral ballots, um, like uh, all the, the, well, the insurrection itself. I mean, you, you know, to me, all these subjects we're going to talk about in this program, they're all connected. And as you mm -hmm. say, they all have a fundamental set of problems, uh, you know, where the country is broken. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you think of one, you can hardly not think of the others. And mm -hmm. so I suppose, you know, you're, you're really right about that is that we have to, you know, dig deep and find the fundamental problems and, and change them. But that requires a reorientation of the Completely. citizenry. And, you know, talk about education. I mean, I've always said that you, you want to re-educate, you know, a country. Um, you got to start, you know, you got to start in, uh, in grade school and mm -hmm. you got to spend, uh, you know, like a generation teaching them. Absolutely. One of the, you know, there's a program, uh, a Ken Burns program on the Holocaust I was mentioning to you. And half of it was, uh, you know, on one night and the other half will be on another night. And um, what is extraordinary about this is that Hitler understood that you had to educate kids your way. Mm -hmm. And he, he created Hitler Youth, mm -hmm. which was very effective to build, you know, a citizenry that would, that would follow him, that would support him no matter what. And uh, very chilling to make the comparison between what happened in Germany. We've been thinking this for a long time, but it is emerging now. And the Burns film gives you footage and concept that makes the connection all the, all the more clear. So, yes, it's a five alarm fire, um, but we don't have 10 or 20 years to fix it. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing is it's like, I, I completely agree with you. The only way this is going to get fixed, we need a sea change. We, we need to start all the way at the ground and kind of redo this. That's, that's not, we don't have the time and we don't have the resources. And we also don't, I mean, I hate to say this, but the country doesn't have the inclination. These same people that are in power and passing these bananas laws, like they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't serve their purposes at all. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to figure out what motivates them, but you know it's not the same the same motivation that the country has had over these years. The, the social compact of the country, you know, where everybody believes in the same form of government, in the same moral structure, if you will, you know, it's it's like you would have thought after Dobbs, you would have thought that people would rise up in every state and say, "What are you doing to the women in the state? You can't do that." But that's not what happened. No, it went not. into chaos immediately. I mean, Donald Trump likes chaos, and his friends, his autocratic, mm -hmm. autocratic supporters like chaos. So what you have now is legal chaos. And that's the problem, and I, I'm resting this on your doorstep. <laughs> the problem is um, if you have different people in different states, different legislatures, different everything, everywhere in the country, a complete chaos. Um, you're not going to have a fix if you have a, you know, what, chaos is not a fix for anything. I want to go on record about that. Um, so then when you have chaos, here's the question, Kimi, what follows? You know, I don't know. Um, I've actually, I, I just recently had a very similar conversation with my dad, who is a wonderful, wonderful man. Um, probably one of the best, one of the best people I've ever known in my whole life. 
Wow. Uh, but he, he is a, he is a white male. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> so a lot of, there comes a lot of privilege with that. And he was kind of one of those people that in the early days of Trump, even when he got elected, he was like, well, it's, it won't like stop catastrophizing to me. It won't be that bad. You know, this country is not going to fall apart. He's kind of like, you know, downplaying it. Um, and when, I mean, when all the things that happened, then when Dobbs happened, I, I had this discussion with him where I was like, do you see it now? Like, do you see what this man has created? I mean, he's completely upended American values. He, like, we can't agree on anything anymore. The anniversary of 9-11, which should have been an amazing momentous time for the country to come together, it felt like all the media outlets were trying to trick us into feeling that way. Like, hey, remember when we all liked each other? And it's like, that is so sad. And I just don't know, I mean, this is gonna sound so, so, so dramatic. I don't know if, if the multiple factions of America can be made whole. I don't know if we're gonna splinter into a bunch of different smaller groups. I don't know, like, I, I just don't know how the federalist system that we have that you were just talking about, how does it go on when you've got a state like California on one side and Texas on the other? You know, you, you don't share values. You don't share agreement on how resources should be allocated. You don't share any agreement on how problems should be fixed. And so to answer your question about what comes after the chaos, I think it's just more chaos. I, I don't know what, what the end point is or what the natural stopping point is other than we all go our separate ways. And I, I don't like to think of that as a realistic you know, option, especially because we're also intertwined at this point, but it just seems like we're getting further and further and further apart. It does. I mean, is, is the solution to, you know, the fundamental problem that we're reaching for, um, is, it, is it leadership? Is it some president strong, maybe stronger than Joe Biden? Although his, his talk to uh, 60 Minutes was pretty good this week, I have to say. Uh, surprising on some levels. Uh, I, and his, 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 his staff was su surprised about some of the things he said. <laughs> but... But um, suffice to say, if, you, if we had a really, I, I'll, I'll pull one out of history, JFK. If we yeah. had a JFK kind of president who everybody liked, everybody followed, mm -hmm. he had a magic about them. You know, could that help alleviate the chaos? It would go a long way. Yeah. It would go a really long way. Um, I think you're right. We have not had a charismatic unifying leader in a long time. Um, of course, that kind of depends on who you ask, right? Because I thought Obama was great. <laughs> that completely depends on who you ask. Um, but that would go a long way. I just also don't know if, I mean, part of why JFK was so charismatic and successful is that they got to write the narrative about themselves. They got to create Camelot. They got to, you know, I don't know if that era exists anymore because so much of what Donald Trump did was he stripped away kind of that shiny veneer of respect that we accord to people in, in elected office. And he exposed this really awful underbelly of everything. And now you're kind of like, well, how do I, how do I trust elections? How do I trust that these people really have my best interests at heart, you know? And I, I would like to think that sure, if one of the parties could put together, put forward a candidate that actually has the chance to unify the country, that'd be great. That's a huge start. I just don't know if, it's, if they're out there. No, and you know, um, if you have chaos around the country, um, it's it's really hard to bring it back to where it was. Right. To respect right. and uh, you know, a law-abiding country and and yep. caring for everyone and a social safety net, and all the all the moral things yes. that you know we've seen in our lifetime, we, and unfortunately they've been deteriorating. But one thing it offers, and if you look deeply into um, Trump's mind and possibility um, is that we wind up with an autocracy. Yep. We lose the democracy, and a strong mm -hmm. leader emerges not on the democratic mm -hmm. side but on the autocratic side. Mm -hmm. And 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 then we then we have the 1930s. We yeah. have a, a diminution of civil rights, human rights. Uh, we have horrible actions by the state against the citizens. We have um, concentration camps. We have disappearances. All mm -hmm. the things that we have felt that you know would never happen here. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, I think, one possible solution because you keep on spinning around in chaos and a strong autocratic leader emerges, such as Trump or some of the, you know, the autocrats of mm -hmm. the 20th century. And now mm -hmm. um, the, it's a natural progression, isn't it? It is. I, I think you're, I mean, I, I sadly, I think you're right. I think it's more likely we're going to find someone like that than someone that unifies the country in a good way. Um, because that's who thrives in chaos, right? People, people who have dreams of kingship and grandeur. And it's, uh, I also think it's true on the flip side that the population, it, it's mob, mob thought, right? You get scared. So you follow somebody that you think is going to make things better. And it, it, it's also like you said, where people are like, well, that can't happen here. And it's like, it, it can, it does already in some states. And it's, I think we talked about this in the last, the last show I was on with you, but um, it's very much to me like that World War II poem about, you know, first they came for the clerics and I didn't say anything because I'm not a cleric. And then they came for the teachers and I didn't say anything because I'm not a teacher. And then they came for the Jews and I didn't say anything because I'm not a Jew. And then they came for me and there was no one left to say anything. And that's, to me, that's kind of the direction that I unfortunately see us going in, um, going circling full circle here back to the Dobbs decision. The very first thing a lot of people noticed was like, oh my God, they're coming for the gays next. If you read the decision, it's like, you're coming for everybody that doesn't fit in your little square white box. And if you don't think that's true, you're not paying attention, <laughs> you know? Mm. I, well, I, I, yes, I think it is true and it's coming faster than we think. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's going to explode in a little while, maybe mm -hmm. in November, who knows? Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing I want to ask you is this. Let's assume, you know, that Dobbs is really a statement of, of civil rights, of the rights mm -hmm. of women, the rights of citizens. And Dobbs represents much more than abortion. It represents, um, you know, civil rights. Bodily um, autonomy, 100%. Yeah. And, and uh, so if that happens, um, what, this is very scary now. What is the role of the lawyer? What is the role of the bar association? What is the role of somebody who you know, practices business law, but who, who is conscious of these issues like you are? Um, what, happens to the, what happens to the profession? They're supposed to be uh, not only the merchants of words, but you know, the protector of the precedent, the protector mm -hmm. of the rule of law mm -hmm. um, that changes, it changes things. You know, uh, uh, you know, Shakespeare said the first thing we do is kill all the lawyers. I think that's this, the second thing. The first thing we do is, is kill all the media. And that is part of the scenario in this Holocaust movie, by the way. Um, but it's very scary that the, those who are bound professionally to, you know, protect and preserve our civil rights um, will be at risk and will have a a burden, perhaps, that the average person won't, because, the, you know, the citizens haven't taken social studies, but the lawyers have, or most of them. What happens? Yeah, I mean, I mean, first of all, I totally agree with you. I think that it's, and I think at least what you're alluding to is, I think it's our duty and our obligation. You know more than the average person. You have taken these classes. You, someone has to stand up and say something, do something. Um, and you become responsible for that. You know, you, I, I, we, it's funny that we're having, you're having Bobby Seufer as the moderator because I sat with him on a HSP Leadership Institute panel um, where we talked about, you know, you as an attorney, I don't care if you do commercial real estate, criminal law, civil litigation, IP, all of those things. You have a fundamental set of tools that the average person does not. And you need to, you have a responsibility to share that and do it responsibly and make sure your friends and your family, the people who may not be, like you're saying, as up and up on the news or as up and up on like, look, these are real world consequences. This is not just about abortion. This is not just about X, Y, and Z. Like make people aware of that and make them realize what they can and can't do. So I don't know, yeah. maybe that's an overly optimistic role for attorneys. Well, I mean, so the question is, what do the attorneys do? They do with those skills, the special skills that would allow them to do. They go mm -hmm. to court, they argue in front of judges who may, who may be political appointees, such as that judge in mm -hmm. Florida. Um, they may go to the legislature and find that the legislature 
is is in the other camp. That is, it hasn't mm-hmm. taken social studies. Um, they have <laughs> they have a, a, a you know a, a burden, and they may not be able to you know correct these problems. Furthermore, even in the state of Hawaii, uh, the GOP is very organized, and there are more GOP Sorry. candidates this year in Hawaii than before. It's really interesting. And so what you have is a is an organized campaign on the other side of the issue, who would support Trump and you know and all those mm-hmm. GOP destructive in a heartbeat. Things. Yeah. So um, yeah, all all I'm saying is in order to get back, in order to counteract what has happened and the implications of what will happen under Dobbs, uh, there's a lot of work to be done, and there's a lot of sure. mm, opposition to it. Uh, and sure. as you said, we're we're in a kind of, you didn't use the term, but a kind of civil war uh, over that. And so it's not so easy to fix it. And and furthermore, the fixing may result in a situation that needs more fixing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. <laughs> okay, well, where does it come to an end? And uh, on September September 30 at 10 in the morning, Kime Ide Foster is going to tell us she's going to have this worked out. I don't know. I can't imagine how she's going to have it worked out. But she will be <laughs> discussing the logical conclusion of all these considerations and uh, you know phenomena that are now in place, now happening, now changing. The dynamic mm-hmm. is impossible to watch. And Kimi, I I I I guarantee you that in the time, the two weeks time between now and September 30th. Something 30, else will have happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Kimi. thank you thank for thank having you. me, Jay. Yeah, thanks for talking to me this morning and thanks for participating in the program. Have uh, a good one. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.